Well, it's been a while since I've done a watch review, so I'm really excited to feature this one here, the Thorn SHY033. Let's check it out. Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave and hey, did you know it is a great day to wear a watch? Now in honor of today's review, I'm rocking my Blanc Pan 50 Fathoms reference 5015. So I dropped a video a few months back for the AliExpress 1111 sale and the watch that I was most excited for was this one here, the Thorn SHY033. It is now available on Amazon as well but a quick shout out to one of my loyal subscribers, Junior Johnson, as he is very generous and was willing to send his personal Thorn watch into the channel to review, but I was able to snag one for myself, so I just wanted to say thank you, Junior, for that kind offer. Now, this watch is an homage of the Blanc Pan 50 Fathoms Aqualung Reference 2462, which is a 41 millimeter dive watch with slight design variations from the original 50 Fathoms. The Thorn does a great job of paying homage to the reference 2462 with a slight smaller case diameter of 40 millimeters, lug to lug height of 50 millimeters, lug width of 20 millimeters, and a case height of 13.5 millimeters with the box domed K9 mineral glass crystal. The glass does feature an AR coating on the underside and gives a lovely distortion when viewing the dial from an angle, much like the original 50 Fathoms. The case crown and bezel are constructed from 316L stainless steel with a bead blasted finish that gives it a nice matte look overall. Different from the brushed and polished finishing of the real 50 Fathoms, I do like the muted look of the case overall, and while there is a matching finish on the nylon canvas strap hardware, you do want to keep in mind that when changing straps, there will be a noticeable difference in the finishing if the strap has high polish or satin brushed hardware. The Thorn has a 120 click unidirectional rotating bezel with ceramic insert that has recessed hour markers and indices that have been filled with C3 Luminova in this creamy Fotina color. They have done a really nice job of mimicking the Bakelite look from the 1950s and even the smooth sides of the bezel with just the top edge having a slight coin edge to it are much like that of the Aqualung. The bezel action is crisp, it's not too stiff or loose and has very slight back play but the indices do not line up perfectly, which was really disappointing to see. I do also wish that the bezel was just a tad wider with larger indices and baton markers, as these seem just a bit small in relation to the rest of the watch. Finishing on the case is top notch with sharp lines sloping downward on the lugs, flawless blending between the case and bezel, consistent edges on the bezel and clean drilled lug holes, which are playing to that vintage flare and there is a perfectly sized unsigned screw down crown. Moving to the front of the watch, we see the black dial. There is plenty of high contrast with the white thorn branding and logo at 12 o'clock. Now I do wanna point out that this font and logo are very reminiscent of the vintage Tudor font with the Tudor Rose logo. So as a hashtag Tudor bro, you know that I'm in love with this look. We also see water resistance indication of 200 meters, automatic movement, and a strangely worded exploration road listed at 6 o'clock. I mean, a simple 200 meters or 660 foot in automatic wording would have been fine. This part of the watch is my least favorite, but it is not a deal breaker for me. The pros still greatly outweigh any cons. Now, also printed in white is the chapter ring with Arabic minute indices in 5 minute intervals and split second markers. This is slightly strange as split seconds are generally used in chronograph watches and we don't often see this with dive watches. Application of the loom is done really well with healthy layers of C3 loom stacked at each hour marker. Even the small triangles at 3, 6, 9, and 12 are applied very evenly. The handset also has this Fotina loom that's been applied and the white gloss paint of the handset gives really great legibility to this watch. The pencil shaped minute and hour hands as well as the dart tipped seconds hand are perfect when compared to the Blanc Pen. The loom is really outstanding with even application throughout the dial, hour markers, the handset, and the bezel. The most impressive part about this watch for me would be how evenly matched the loom is. Usually at this price point, the hands will either be brighter than the dial or the bezel, or the bezel will be brighter than the dial, but with the Thorn, you have an even brightness across the watch. 
The loom will last nice and strong for about an hour before fading to a faint glow. Powering the watch is the Seiko NH35 movement. Usually I have no issues with this workhorse movement, but I do really wish that they had gone with the NH38 as that movement does not have a date complication. With the thorn, you have a ghost date function, so there is an extra stop in your crown positioning that is not used. Again, not a deal breaker, just something a purist like myself will notice and point out. The strap is a really robust, thick seatbelt nylon strap with really nice quality stitching throughout, and it feels like it will hold up well over time, both in or out of the water, without any issues. Now, because of the longer lugs on this watch, there is a bit of a gap when using some straps. So while this watch is an absolute strap monster, you may run into issues where you can see parts of your wrist in the gap between the spring bars and the watch case. If that is an issue, you'll want to stick with NATO style straps or other pass through straps and also try to seek out straps that have a bead blasted finish that will give you a more cohesive look overall. Here is just a few of my favorite pairings. I will have links below in the description and comments where you can pick up the Thorn SHY033, both from Amazon or AliExpress. It is a great watch for the money. And while it lacks horological significance, I can appreciate that it allows for those of us who love the look and history of the 50 Fathoms to be able to get something on the wrist that looks the part while still being completely functional as a dive watch. I always love to hear your thoughts, so please drop me a comment and I will look forward to seeing you all at the next one. Take care.